What's up, everybody? It's BBK Dragoon. We're taking on the final fight of the King's Fall Raid normal mode. This is a guide for how to beat Oryx. I put together some sweet graphics that will make this fight a whole lot easier. First thing you want to do, run towards the little ball of light. That's going to summon Oryx, or what I like to call Gundam Oryx, because he is literally the size of a Gundam mobile suit. That is huge, Oryx. Like, you are ridiculously big. Right before I explain the positioning, I want to say a huge shout out and thank you to Sassy, 8 bit Nacho, Germanicus, Azure Dragon, and Rippin from Destiny Tracker for showing me this fight, getting me through it, teaching me all this stuff so that I could show it to you guys. I've linked as many of their stuff down below. Show them some love. Let's hop into the positioning for this fight. So, Oryx spawns at the front of the room. That's notated by my lovely picture here. There are four pillars that all are around the room. They matter a whole lot. Then you have the green dots. Those represent the two towers that the Death Singer stand on. The five yellow dots are guardians, and that last orange dot is the guardian who is going to get the brand. You want guardians assigned to every pillar, and that will be their pillar throughout the fight. One Guardian will always be on the tower, helping deal DPS to the Ogres that will spawn. I'll explain that in a second. The orange dot is the Brand Runner. He needs to be in the middle because Oryx has a chance to either go to the top right or the top left pillar when the fight spawns. For this example, let's assume Oryx goes to the top right pillar. That means the guy who's going to get the Brand is going to work his way over to the top right. And we'll see that now. So he works his way over to the top right pillar. The guy who is at the bottom right pillar is not needed. You only need the three pillars, and it always is counterclockwise. So in this case, we'd need top right, top left, and bottom left. Don't worry, it'll make more sense in a minute. But whoever is the fourth pillar in the counterclockwise sequence, the fourth pillar away from Oryx in a counterclockwise sequence, goes up on the tower to help. The Brand Runner, after Oryx slams his fist onto the pillar, because he'll do that, jumps onto that pillar, okay? Next, the guy who is on the top right pillar, the not Brand Runner, jumps up there as well. And you can see that the yellow dot hops up there. And now your Brand Runner jumps on the invisible platforms that have basically spawned up above. And he's going to start jumping and platforming counterclockwise around the room until he reaches the Brand. Next up, in a counterclockwise rotation, would be the top left guardian. He hops onto his pillar. Don't hop on before the top right pillar has been activated. You need to give like a little bit of time. If you just jump on immediately before the platforms have spawned, you'll screw the sequence up. The next and last guardian to hop on the platform is going to the, the bottom left one. He'll have hop on. That orange dot that is the brand runner all this time is platforming up above everyone else to get to the brand. The brand is marked on the map with a little circle. So let's see what that looks like actually in the fight. So Oryx heads to the top right, right at the beginning. Azure, right in front of me with the sword, that's our brand runner. So Oryx slams his fist down. And after that, Azure is going to jump up on the platform. Now give him some time. He jumps up and I follow. I need to stay on this platform until the brand is received. Four ogres spawn next to each platform. It is the job of everyone to take these ogres out. This is why you have two people on the towers. You need to DPS these ogres down as fast as humanly possible. Once your brand runner has gotten the brand, he will call it out and you can hop off the platforms. Return to the center and help your teammates take out that last ogre. Okay, next up, we're going to take a quick second and show you what's going on here. That ship drops off this bro, the Vessel of Oryx. It is a Hive Knight who is an elite. It is the brand runner's job, once he has gotten the brand, to drop down find the vessel and when you're close to the vessel as the brand runner you will have a prompt on the screen to hold x to steal something you need to then kill the vessel as quickly as possible i can't stress the quickly part because otherwise oryx is going to do a raid wide wipe so take the vessel down as soon as possible the next step is then to look towards oryx now your brand runner who stole that item he now has this circle around him that grants the aura of immortality. Your whole raid team needs to be inside of this bubble to damage Oryx to the degree that we need to. The Brand Runner can stand in the center, which I recommend, but in this case, we ran a little bit closer to the pillar where Oryx was. 
Oryx will slam his fist onto the pillar again and lean back and his chest will open up. When his chest opens up, you and your raid team need to do as much DPS as possible. So you see here, he slammed his fist, he leans back and his chest will open up. You will see a white light. When this occurs, that's where you shoot and your team lets loose. Let him have it. Sniper rifles are great. You need to deal a lot of DPS here in order to stagger Oryx. If you don't stagger him, meaning you don't deal enough DPS in the about six or seven second period of time you have here, he will do a raid wide wipe. So you must DPS him. Even if you're missing one person, it can be hard to hit that limit. So we're shooting, we're shooting, and you'll see Oryx jump back. That means you staggered him. Well done, but it's not over yet. The four guardians who were assigned a pillar need to return to their respective pillars as soon as possible. You'll see these black balls. These are called corrupted light. You need to step inside the corrupted light near your respective pillar in order to detonate it. So you step inside it for a few seconds. You'll see in the lower left hand side of the screen, a little text thing that appears saying you detonated that corrupted light. At the same time this happens, your brand runner returns to the center of the map in between the two towers and stays there. So we just staggered Oryx, I run to the top right, because that was my pillar, I get inside the corrupted light, I wait until I see detonated that corrupted light, and then I run as fast as I can back to the center. All guardians need to be in the center after they've detonated their corrupted light, because Oryx right here is doing a raid wide wipe attack. You need to be inside the bubble that is around your brand runner. It'll keep you and your raid team from being killed, but everybody needs to be in there. Congrats, you just beat the first cycle of Oryx. Now it's rinse and repeat. But let's see what happens if Oryx goes to the top left. Since I'm top right, I'm not needed. I'm the fourth one in the counterclockwise sequence, so I hop up on the towers to help deal DPS. So Oryx slams his fist top left. All we need now is the two pillars past it in a counterclockwise rotation. Bottom left, bottom right. If you're up on the tower, it's your job to just help DPS down the ogres as soon as possible. And once the brand runner has the brand, you just jump down center, take out the vessel of Oryx, and it's exactly as described earlier. So we're detonating our corrupted light. I just jumped back in time here. We're detonating that corrupted light. We immediately run back to the center, get ourselves inside this circle. You can continue DPSing Oryx, by the way, in this period of time. So I recommend that you do that. High attack sniper rifles are extremely effective and highly recommended. There we go, first cycle completed. Now, in between cycles, Oryx has two things that he can do. He can teleport you, which we'll cover later, or he'll do what he's about to do, which is cause little explodey bubbles on the ground to damage you and your team. The way you avoid this is you run in circles. Every guardian runs in a small circle around their respective pillar. Oryx leans back when he does this, by the way. You need to sprint as fast as you can. Do you see that little light on the floor? Well, that light is basically little AoE bubbles that Oryx is putting on the ground to try and damage guardians. He'll do this for like 20, 25 seconds. It's not that hard to avoid. You just need to run in circles. Seems silly because it kind of is. But hey, there you go. And then the next cycle of the fight will commence. So in this case, Oryx is going to the back left pillar, which means I, being top right, will be the last in the sequence. So check it out. He's going to slam his fist down. Our brand runner hops on, just as he did before, followed by the guy who's going to hold that platform down. Now it's the back right guy who's going to hop on, hops on, and then I'm going to hop on last as I fail my jump here. Turn around and DPS those ogres. Be careful, some of the ships in the area will be firing at you, so you can take some damage. The faster you can kill the ogres, the better. I have a little slip up here. As I pull out my sniper, I thought I had all four shots, but I did not. But luckily, my guys on the tower make up for the slack. So we take down the ogres. Our brand runner announces he has the brand, so we can hop off the platforms and begin attacking that vessel of Oryx. So they're attacking the vessel. They kill the vessel. We stay inside the bubble that our brand runner has for us, and we get ready to DPS Oryx. Put as much damage into him as you can. The moment he staggers, go back and detonate your corrupted light. When you're far away, you need to go quick. So hop on in, and there's ads that spawn, so there is the chance that you can die here. I detonated my corrupted light, but got shot by too many things. So, it's okay if you die after you've gotten past the DPS portion of Oryx. As long as he's staggered, you usually have enough time to be safe, okay? 
So Oryx can now teleport you or he can do the floor detonation. He's going to opt for the teleporting, which I'll explain here in just a second. There's only two things Oryx can do in between the cycles, the main cycles I've been explaining this whole time. Detonate the floor, as you've already seen, and the teleport method, which he's doing right now. Oryx will teleport Guardians one by one into that black bubble. If you're outside of the bubble, your job is to focus ads. Do you see those thralls who are getting inside the bubble? You want to take down as many of those as possible. They'll spawn top left and top right. Now I've been teleported in. See that? It's a shade of Oryx. You should recognize this from the story. Your Guardian's job, the ones inside the bubble, is to focus down this shade as fast as possible. If you do not kill him in a certain amount of time, and it's pretty small, it's a small window of time, the whole raid wipes and you die. So everybody needs to focus down that shade as quickly as possible. Our raid crew did pretty darn well there. Now, it's a small window of time you have to actually kill that shade, so don't dilly-dally. Congratulations, you just beat the teleportation. So remember, he can do two things in between the cycles, teleport or blow up the floor. He's going to the top left pillar to start this off again, so I'm not needed. I get to go up onto the tower and help DPS those ogres. Oh, failing. I've been playing too much Hunter. My fat warlock has just fallen behind. Any time missed here is DPS not spent well. First ogre down. Second ogre about to go down. We start to look at the third ogre put our DPS into him, and as soon as he's down, we look towards the fourth ogre. So I'm going to jump ahead to the end of this cycle. Nothing changes, you guys. It's all the same. The cycles play out exactly the same. So let's hop to where we just detonated our corrupted lights. The more DPS you can put into him each cycle, the faster this fight is going to go. So we just completed our third cycle. He returns to the front of the room, giving me a couple little seconds to grab some ammo, reload, do what I need to. When he pulls back, he's going to basically zap the floor, but when he leans forward like this, it starts the teleportation phase. Take out the knights, there will be some adds that spawn, and if you're outside the teleportation, remember, really focus down those thralls. The more thralls you can keep out of that center bubble, the easier it's going to be on your teammates to take down that shade of oryx. So keep shooting them, look left, look right, and you won't be outside for too, too long. And when you get teleported inside, your job again is to focus down that shade. So I'm teleported inside. The Shade of Oryx can come inside and swing that huge frickin' sword. So if you've got good teammates who are calling it out, they'll let you know the Shade of Oryx came inside. That will one-hit you, by the way, so do not mess around with it. Focus down the Shade. He will blink all over the place, behind you, to the left, to the right. Just listen with your ears. A lot of times you can hear it and call it out to your teammates. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. And as soon as he's down, you go back outside, and the cycle begins again. So I'll jump ahead one more time to the end of this cycle. So here it is, we've killed our ogres, we've done our platforms the right way, we're taking out the vessel one last time. He slams his fist, we're inside the aura of immortality. We focus our DPS as much as we can on that chest, and as soon as he's staggered, we run to our corrupted light. He's staggered, we push into the corrupted light, Stand inside of it, make sure you wait for the text to read you detonated that light, then run back to the center as soon as you can to avoid the raid wide wipe. Put DPS into Oryx or ads. I was on ad duty right now, but you can continue DPSing Oryx. You'll see his health get very, very low, and see the health bar is completely gone. Here is important, guys. When that health bar is gone, return to the front of the room. You'll see Oryx here at the very front of the room. Get ready to DPS him one more time. You still need to do this one more time. You need to stagger him one more time, otherwise the whole fight ends there. Congratulations, that is the Oryx fight, and you get one of the coolest death animations for a boss ever as he just floats away into space. Don't forget about the chest that you will receive. It's located back in the middle of the map by the towers. Additionally, if you do not stagger him on that last stage, you will wipe. We had this happen to us one time, and man, it was heartbreaking. So if you put all that stuff together, congratulations. What an incredible fight. If you have questions for me, feel free to ask them down below. If you have tips of your own, please feel free to share them. I will say this. This is week one of King's Fall, so I'm sure some more strategies will be discovered as time moves on. As this stands, if you've got a good team who can communicate well, this is a really solid strategy that we've executed numerous times this week. 
Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed, please let me know with a like, subscribe to the channel for more Destiny tips and videos, and I look forward to seeing you next time, Guardians. Good luck taking down Oryx.